Hi everyone and welcome to English Coach 3TS here in the kitchen today. So I've had a lot of students lately ask me questions about different types of utensils that we use in the kitchen. So I thought I would show you some of the utensils I have in my kitchen and these are common kitchen vocabulary words. Okay, so I have several things to share with you today. This first is a set of measuring cups. So we have, in the United States, we use uh, the cup. We have a quarter cup, a half cup. Uh, oh wait, actually we have a quarter cup, a third of a cup, a half cup, and a whole cup. Just like measuring cups, we also have measuring spoons. They're all hooked together here. And we measure by teaspoons. We have a quarter, half, and a full teaspoon. Then we also have a tablespoon. So, and they nest together. When they go like this, we say they nest together, just like the measuring cups nest together. Okay, the next items I have all look like spoons and you could just call them that, give me that big spoon. We actually call this our big spoon, or our big metal spoon. Um, and we use that for serving and cooking. Um, and this is a slotted spoon. It's just like the big spoon, except it has slots for straining things. And then this one is actually a soup ladle. So we use this to serve soups and broths and gravies and things like that. Do you know what this one is? This is a wire whisk. Do you have a wire whisk or any of these utensils in your kitchen? Let me know in the comments below. I use this most often for making hot cereals or for whisking hot beverages. This one I talked about in a live, a 10 minutes with Tanya. If you haven't checked out our 10 minutes with Tanya on Instagram, go over there. I have a whole series of live videos that you can practice your listening, listen to quizzes, different topics, and ask questions. And this was one of the items on my quiz earlier this week. Um, and this is a cheese grater, or you could call it a vegetable grater. We use it to grate cheese and vegetables. This is a, a can opener, uh, so you'd use your hand. A lot of Americans, most Americans I would say, or a lot I should say, have electric can openers, but I like the old-fashioned kind. You just put it on a can and use your hand for that. This is a strainer. So I have, you can see here that I have a colander on the wall. It's a little different, a colander and a strainer. The colander is bigger. I use this for pasta and also for washing vegetables. This I use for smaller things. Tiana uses it actually more than I do, but it's very handy if you're making something for just one person. All right. This is probably one of the most common utensils in our kitchen. This is called a spatula. You can use this for flipping pancakes or uh, whatever you use in a skillet um, when you're frying things or for all kinds of things. Um, I like to use a metal spatula. A lot of people have plastic spatulas. Uh, so I hope this is helpful so far. If it is, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe below so you can see and be told when we have more videos like this one. All right. Another thing that I have here for you today is a sharp knife. So this knife has a cover. It's a sharp knife. I use this for chopping and dicing vegetables. When we dice a vegetable, it means we cut it into very small squares. I like to dice onions. I used to dice tomatoes a lot. I don't, I don't eat tomato as much as I used to, even though I love it. Um, or you can use this for slicing. Um, slicing is the action we take when we cut things into thin pieces. We slice it. All right. And then another sharp knife that I like to have in, pardon me, in my kitchen 
is a paring knife. Uh, this paring knife is great for all kinds of smaller jobs. I use it almost every day to cut to cut cucumbers or to slice apples. Um, and it also has a cover so you don't cut yourself in the drawer. This is one of the really cool things I love is you can just, I these are the only two knives I have. A lot of people have a lot of sharp knives. Um, my grandmother would have called this a butcher knife. I think it's a little different than a butcher knife, but uh, she would have still called it that. Um, and then another knife that we have, although we only have one or two of them, but this is a steak knife. Uh, most people use these for cutting steak or chicken or something like this. We mostly use it as a paring knife. So when this knife is dirty, we use this steak knife for a paring knife. Um, and that is it for utensils in the kitchen today. I wanted to give you a quick quiz and see if you can remember what some of these items are. So I'm gonna do them in a little different order. Do you know what the name of this is? What is the name of this? A wire whisk. And how about this one? This is a spatula. How about these two guys here? We have two different kinds. They're both strainers. This is a small strainer, but this one is specifically called something. Do you remember? The name for this one, it's a colander. Very good. How about this one? Do you remember what this one is called that we use by hand for opening something? It is a can opener. How about this one from my recent live? What do we call this one? This one is a cheese grater. And we have all of these, which as I told you, we might just say are big spoons, but what are the different ones called? This is our slotted spoon. This is our soup ladle. And this is what we just call a big spoon, or I didn't say this before, you could say a serving spoon. And then we have two different utensils, two different sets of utensils for measuring. What do we call them? This one was our measuring cups and this one is our measuring spoons and they're all nested together. All right, I hope that those were things you could remember. Just two more, what do we call these? We could, the both of them together, we could say they're sharp knives. What did I say my grandmother might call this one? A butcher knife. And this one? A paring knife. All right, were there any utensils that you have been wondering about that I didn't talk about in this video? Let me know in the comments below. And let me know other topics that you'd like us to make videos about because our goal here is to make videos that will be very helpful to you in your English learning journey. It was great to spend a little time with you again. I'm looking forward to seeing you in another video and I'll talk to you soon. We have more videos to help you make your English better. YouTube has already chosen one for you here or you might like to try this one. See you next time. Bye.